Hey guys, happy Saturday to everybody. And yeah, horrible lighting. It's very dreary outside. <laughs> but here we have little Junie, Junie June, my precious girl. And I thought since this is a very much requested video that I would oblige. Um, I've had several of you guys out there that wanted to watch me, how, watch how I style putting an outfit together for Monroe. For Monroe. Oh my gosh. Well, that should tell you where my brain is at. But <laughs> the, you guys have wanted to see how I've put an outfit together and styled little Junie here. So I wanted to do that along with giving some tips along the way. Um, and we'll see together if the outfit that I've kind of pictured in my mind that I want to put on her that has not been on her yet um, <clears throat> we'll see if it works out, right? Um, so she's still in her, her little Junie personalized onesie that I ordered from Etsy. It's just from an Etsy shop. I want to make sure you guys can see that. Super cute. Um, and she's wearing just this really sweet, um, sweater by Stella McCartney kids. And then her little Zara matching, didn't even try to do that, Dusty Rose little um, crib shoes and a pair of little ankle socks. So that's what she's been in for quite some time. So I want to take her out of that um, and put her in something that I'm not sure will actually work out. And this is why I wanted to come on and do this because the, the thing with bigger dolls, there is a challenge. <laughs> we know this. And some, it, it really is a lot of trial and error. So many people have asked me, like, how do you know it's going to work out? How do you know it's going to fit her? And how are you going to know? How do you know you're going to like it? I don't. Everything that I have purchased for her and put on her has literally been trial and error because I thought in my mind that it would be really cute on her. Um, so ultimately, I buy with that intention, right? So it's important to kind of keep in mind that it doesn't always work out. It does not always work out and you have to be okay with it. You have to kind of adjust and work with your doll based on its features, based on how big the baby is. And I'm going to talk about like the body, the body as I undress her, um, it, it's, it can be challenging and it's kind of like how we dress our own bodies, right? Like think about it for a second. Like we all have different shaped bodies. We all have unique things about our bodies and we have to take into consideration when we dress our bodies, what complements our body shape versus what might not complement our body shape. And figuring that out for me as a person who loves fashion, I love fashion. I am, I am a slave to fashion. <laughs> even at almost 50 years old, right? I'm going to be 50 in April. And I, I have such a passion for fashion, but I had to learn how to dress my body appropriately. And a lot of the fashion trends or the things that are out there currently to buy don't necessarily look good on me just because it's a fashion trend and it's current and it's in a store does not mean it's going to fit my body properly or look good on me in any way, shape or form. In fact, it may bring out a lot of the things that I don't like about my body. So I, I take that into consideration when I'm dressing my dolls. Monroe has her own issues or challenges, I guess we could say. And June has her own challenges that we have to overcome with her body. And we're going to just talk about that. So first thing I forgot to take off my, my rings. Um, let First thing I do before I handle any of my dolls, and here's a tip number one, take off your jewelry. Um, the fact that my rings that I normally would be wearing, I set them aside. I normally take them off and put them and I leave them in my, my bedroom <laughs> where they come, where they, where their boxes live. Um, but I, I say that with whether or not you're dressing a full body silicone or a vinyl reborn. Take your jewelry off if you don't want to scratch, snag. Like that's my biggest fear with like handling Monroe. Like I and I always wash my hands prior to handling my dolls so that they're clean. 
because dirts, oils, things can definitely do damage to our dolls. And we don't even really think about it a whole lot, most of us. Um, but you should, because it does matter, you know, if you want your doll to last. Uh, it's important that we handle them with care and with clean hands. And I also took off her bow that literally just sits. A lot of you have asked me, how do I get the bow to stay in place? How do I get the bow to stay in place? It just sits there. And <laughs> this is the brand. Let's see. And if you hear my stomach growling, there we go. I apologize. Um, because I am currently doing an extended fast. So I currently do not have, I've, I've not eaten anything yet today and I won't until later tonight when I actually have um, my dinner. Um, <laughs> I do intermittent fasting all the time, but this is like an extended fast. Um, I do those occasionally um, simply because they're very good for your, your body to repair. Um, but yes, your stomach will growl all day long. Um, so I apologize because that's what you're going to hear. And I'm sipping on uh, lemon water because that is um, something you can have that's low enough calories when you're doing a fast. Um, so there's that. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about, and I digress because not like you guys really wanted to hear about my fasting. Um, some of you like to hear about like my health journey. <laughs> So what I'm going to do, and this is the, this is why I don't show changing her on camera because it's awkward. She's a big girl and it's not like the most, it's not like changing Monroe where it seems like it's pleasing to the eye, but I want to, the reason why I want to share this with you and go over all this is because many of you have not seen her torso and dressing her with a torso I have to take that in consideration. So she's different than a cloth body doll. So this is her with her little cloth body underneath, but she has this torso that comes down to the diaper area. And things fit her differently because she does have this torso. Now her body underneath, and I've said this in many videos, I think, when I'm trying to share like what I want to choose for her to dress her in. And she has a little, the top of her little butt back here is where this torso ends. <laughs> but the torso is what gives her structure. Her body is actually underneath is very underfilled and it just works. I don't know. I don't, I don't have um, the same issues as some of the other June mommies out there have had and have sent me messages about because she has, and we're blurry. Hopefully that wasn't blurry the whole time. Um, but she has structure from this and it's a really lovely body plate. I actually am a huge fan of it. I think that all of the artists should use this, I think because it gives them structure. And the problem with not having it is that with a big doll that's awake like June is, since you look at the camera, so you can look at our friends a little bit more. Um, the issue with the Junes is that she's a, she's a big girl. She's meant to be awake. She's meant to be playing. She's meant to be alert, sitting up. She's of an age that she would be interacting. It's, this is not a doll that you want to have laying down is what I wanted to say as well. She's, she should not be laying down. But when you have a cloth body on a doll that's this size, the issue that we have at hand that most of the collectors that have reached out to me have had the struggles is because in order to give the doll structure, the body has to be so overstuffed. It reminds me of a, a teddy bear, a big teddy bear with that protruding giant tummy that's overstuffed and just doesn't bend and move in the middle. Like even though she's got this underneath, she's got a very pliable, soft tummy underneath because it's not overstuffed. It's very understuffed. And in order for her to be able to sit properly, 
and do all the things I want to do with her, she needs structure. So with the cloth bodies, that's, that's like a huge, like challenge simply because you have to dress to cover that overstuffed protruding body that is not realistic. And it literally, most of the bodies I've noticed literally just have pop bellies because they're so overstuffed. So that's the challenge of trying to dress a baby that has the cloth body. I have a different challenge with her because she's got a bigger chest area. So I don't want things to be tight in this area because it doesn't look natural when those clothes are on her. So the outfit that I want to put her in, guys is her little equestrian sweater that has, I love this, that has the little, the elbow patches. <clears throat> I'm going to put her little basic onesie with a beautiful little collar so it protrudes, so it kind of finishes off the outfit. And then I'm going to put her little riding pants with the little inner knee patch. And <clears throat> I don't know if this is going to look good on her, because I said in a previous video how much I dislike tight leggings on chunky babies. But again, styling it in a way that works for this baby's body type, well, I think having, hence the sweater, will cover up. Like, I don't, I'm not a fan of having leggings that are fitted that you see the top of the leggings. It should be covered up with something, whether it be, you know, light layers, thick, chunky layers. It really depends on the doll. But this, I think, will, because it's going to be loose, it will cover the tight-fitted leggings, right? And I tend to be able to go smaller size. Like, this is a three- to six-month size, um, but sweaters tend to be roomier, and they give. So that will be a fine size for her. The leggings are like a 12 to 18 month size because they're just, they're so, they don't have a ton of give. So that's the challenge. And then her onesie is a 12 to 18 month size because I don't want anything tight around her chest, like I said. <clears throat> but every, every other doll that has the cloth body, you want it to be roomy enough where things don't look awkward and weird because babies this age they might have a bit of a protruding tummy but they don't have a pot belly like an overstuffed bear or stuffed animal that just literally has that pot belly they don't look like that so if we're going for realism we want to layer in a way with our bigger dolls that one don't go too chunky because then they literally adds to the sheer size of the overstuffed tummies um you want to try to add light layers and you know if you want to put like a cardigan over some leggings, um, a lot of people are like, I can't get this to look real. It just looks like an overstuffed doll. When I put leggings and a onesie on, it's like, okay, so maybe add like a little cardigan. That's why I'm putting a sweater on her. Ultimately, it's about properly layering in a way that adds realism versus um, putting on things that accent the things that, that don't look real. So we don't want to accent the tummy, right? We don't want to accent her chest that protrudes a little bit more. Um, so you have to kind of counterbalance all of that. Now I'm not going to put her clothes on her on camera, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and I'm going to put this on her and I'm going to come back and let you know whether or not this actually worked out my little outfit choice for her. Because it's 50-50 chance that it might not work, guys, and I might have to ditch <laughs> and rethink what I put on her. And that's the other thing. Don't be, don't force the doll into something. If like, it's never worth forcing the doll into clothes that are too tight or too small or too challenging. Or if it doesn't look right, start over. It's trial and error. You try new things. That's what I do with her. I just, you know, if something doesn't look right on her, and I don't like how it 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 looks overall and the realism isn't there, I move on to something else. I, I abort mission <laughs> and I start over and that's okay to do. And I think that that's also the fun of figuring out what we like for our babies and their body types. Like, I mean, but seriously, like how cute is she? <laughs> She's adorable. My videos, my pictures will never do this baby justice, but she really is so freaking cute. 
and she's so fun. I just thoroughly enjoy her. So I'm going to pause you guys and I will be back momentarily to show you whether or not this outfit works out or not. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. We're back. Little Junie is back. And this is the completed look. So you guys will have to tell me, was it successful? Because it's kind of up to you guys to tell me whether you like the outfit choice on her or if it's not your cup of tea, right? So here she is with the little onesie underneath, the sweater. Now the sweater is a little tight on her arms. However, it's okay. To, for me, I think it's okay because she is chubby in the arms, but it still isn't tight around her, like her tummy area. It's, it fits her in length properly. So I feel like that would be realistic to see a chubbier baby and be able to see like a little bit of tightness on their arm rolls, so to speak. And then we have her leggings, which if they were any smaller, cause I ordered the size below this and I had to send them back. Tip on putting leggings on a chubbier legged baby, um, put tights on them. It, it not only helps slide the pants up easier, but like I just have a very thin, it's like a, it's a very transparent pair of basic tights, same kind of tights I put on Monroe when I, when I put darker colors on her so that the, we don't have any, you know, any dye running. Um, and then the leggings slip on quite easily, even though they're form fitted, they are, they're not extremely tight on her. There's, there's enough give there and enough room that helps things slide up and down. And I'm not, it, even with vinyl reborns, I want to protect the paint and, you know, I don't want to squeeze anything on her because I don't want anything to happen to her paint. And then I put just a pair of the same socks I put back on her and then I, I wasn't sure if I was going to put on her little boots or just these, but I like these with them because then I can see the full legging. Um, but I literally adore this baby in this outfit and I was hoping it would look okay. Now, another tip, like she has short sleeve cap sleeves underneath here. So what I do is I actually push them up because she doesn't have prominent shoulders, this baby. So I have to kind of create them. It, like it's smoke and mirrors, right? It's some MacGyvering, as my friend Michelle would say over on Shelby's <laughs> channel. Um, oh, it's not Shelby anymore. It's Marmalade Life. Sorry. Um, but my friend Michelle always says there's a whole lot of MacGyvering to how we put our dolls in our videos and show them and take pictures of them. It's very true. It's MacGyvering. You've got to work with what we what we got. And because that also adds to the non-realism is the fact that she doesn't have prominent shoulders. You have to kind of create them and give her them in the final look with the clothing. Then it looks more, she's more balanced. But a lot of times when you take, you know, a doll that doesn't have very good shoulders, they look like, again, it comes to mind. And I'll have to see if I can stick a picture in here. Um, to show what I mean is that overly, it's like a rounded, overly stuffed, like bare. That's all I can see that has like the seam down the middle and it protrudes and comes almost to a point at the belly, but they don't have shoulders. You have to create what looks real and create the illusion, so to speak, with our dolls um, based on their body type. So that's how I am able to kind of style her it's not the perfect outfit. Do I love it as much as other things on her? Not necessarily, but I do think it's cute and it does suit her. And then I, of course, gave her her lovey back. I will put her back down on the floor so that she can enjoy her toys. Again, coloring is terrible in here right now. The lighting is awful. It's dark outside. It's, it's not dark, but it's dreary and very gray. So her coloring isn't going to come through, but she's so gorgeous though. I love this baby. I wish you guys could see her in person. She's got so much life to her. And I just, these little, these little perfect little crib shoes. It's just the outfit to me ties together beautifully. And I think it does. I, I'm going back on my word because I'm like, I, I have been avoiding putting this baby in 
tighter leggings for the fact that I don't generally care how it looks, but you add a nice little sweater or a cardigan. So if you don't have a sweater and you have leggings and a onesie underneath, add a little cardigan and you can kind of MacGyver it and maneuver it so that you're covering up the bulk of a soft cloth body doll that's, you know, bigger stuffed. Okay. So that's like, that's like a tip to work around the bigger stuffed tummies. Now, um, if I had her with a cloth tummy and she didn't have the torso that gave her structure, I'd probably make something. I know that, um, my friend Lee, she has actually done that with her. She had a bigger doll a while back and she said she created an armature so that the doll would have structure and could hold itself up with a cloth body so that the body wasn't overstuffed. So that's also something if you're comfortable with reweighting your dolls, you might be comfortable with making and creating out of there are different materials you can use to create an armature that gives, you know, some sort of structure to your baby in that way. You don't have to have the overstuffed, you know, cloth body. So that I thought was genius. And so I, I take tips and things that people share with me over the years and I, I put them to use. So if someone's willing to share how to, how to make something work better, I'm totally going to take it and run with it because I'm all about making sure that the baby at the end result looks real. And to me, I think she looks very real and very cute. But you guys will have to give me your opinions. And hopefully those of you that asked for, you know, how I style her and tips about how to style her based on her body type. I hope I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. Um, she will be playing on the floor with her toys. Um and yeah, I think that, I think this works. I think this works. I, I don't, I don't dislike it. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I'd like it. Um, yeah. And so you guys give me your feedback. Let me know if this was helpful. If you like this sort of video, I'm happy to do it again as I put her in different looks and different outfits. Um, I'd be happy to share that with you, but I hope you guys are enjoying your Saturday. And hopefully you enjoy seeing June, even though her coloring doesn't look like that in real life. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. It's the problem of this nursery. I'll forever be bitching about it. It's just, it's, I'm always complaining because it just doesn't do babies justice in here, especially on this angle. Um, so anyways, guys, happy Saturday. Hopefully you enjoyed this, found some sort of, you know, tips to be helpful. And little Miss Junie and I, we will be back very, very soon with yet another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.